Hey everyone, thank you for joining me on the second last session of the day and the second last uh, day of the conference. Um, I won't take too long, um, I'll try to keep it short uh, with some call to actions. Um, so welcome, I'm going to be talking about uncovering project and community um, health and metrics uh, using data driven techniques. Um, my name is Oindrila Chatterjee. I'm a senior data scientist in Red Hat. I work for the Emerging Tech Group in the office of the CTO. Um, and let me give you uh, a brief overview of the uh, agenda for today. So we are gonna be uh, giving like a brief intro on what are project metrics and how they can support community health. Uh, then I'll introduce our project, um, AI for CI. Um, I'll also briefly touch over the Operate First Community Cloud um, that we are using underneath all of this. Um, then I'm gonna be uh, talking about some AI tools and techniques um, that you can probably use for your open source projects. And finally, um, I'm gonna do a little deep dive into uh, the time to merge model that we came up with. All right, so let's talk metrics. Uh, why metrics? That's like stating the obvious. Uh, it's no secret that um, sources like code repositories, uh, communication channels uh, can reveal a lot of crucial information about a project and a community's health. Uh, we can derive information like uh, the velocity of a project, uh, the blockers in a development process, community engagement, um, so metrics like member churn, average time to fix, time to respond, contributions over time um, can help development teams and open source program offices uh, better allocate resources, evaluate an ongoing project's success. Uh, they can also help advocate for the work that software development teams are doing. Um, it can also help with analyzing software, um, the whole software development community, and finally assess the growth uh, of an open source project and its associated community. So how do we calculate these metrics? Um, sources like GitHub repositories, communication channels, uh, and the data stored in it, like the traffic um, of the users, commits, issues, PRs, the code itself. Um, all of this um, can be used to derive these metrics. Um, and most communities are already doing this in some form and already have some kind of dashboards uh, which track their community health. Um, and also there are various types of tooling that folks are using to achieve this. So in this talk, I'm gonna talk about a particular open source approach that we are following. Uh, that we came up with. And then, can we go a step further to, uh, from analytics to use machine learning to help a project's development process and further foster uh, the growth of its community? So, some examples of a machine learning service can be a model that can predict the time to merge of a pull request on a new repository or a new PR on a repository. Uh, it could be a model that can suggest the optimal time uh, to stop a long-running test before, after which it's most likely to fail, um, predicting um, time to respond on issues, and such ML models. So um, I'm not here to tell you today on which metrics to track and why use metrics to support your open source community. There were some excellent talks in this conference before, um, which I saw uh, by Vishi Sahar on Tuesday, uh, called Def Metrics, Def Team Metrics That Matter, and Kali Dolphy about community metrics, what to measure and why. Uh, I'm rather here to tell you how AI-driven metrics can possibly help your community, how to use open source machine learning tools um, to achieve this process. So if you are a data scientist, a data engineer, or you care about how to stitch this process together, I'm gonna talk about some tools. 
and how this can all be done in an open source community cloud. So looking at the project at hand, um, AI for CI. Um, so the problem that this project seeks to address is that firstly, there is a strong need for AI ops, um, automated monitoring, anomaly detection, alerting, um, and all sorts of AI ops techniques to help with CI CD processes with operations. Um, and the main problem for building such AI ops tools is that all the software, um, even if it's open source, um, it often gets operated behind closed doors and closed systems. Thus, the data and log that are generated by these software are not open source. So uh, this also uh, presents an opportunity to us um, for open source um, communities like the Kubernetes testing infrastructure, um, which make their testing data open source. Um, and these kinds of data sets are a rarity for public data sets today. And it presents a great starting point and an initial area of investigation for the AI ops community to tackle. So uh, this project is basically a collection of some intelligent open source data science tools that can support CI CD processes. Uh, so it consists of AI ops models like the GitHub Time to Merge service, optimal stopping point, build, log, uh, failure classification. Um, it also consists of some KPIs and metric dashboards. And the overall goal is to foster an open source AI ops community with open ops data, uh, tools, and services. So as a part of this project, AI for CI, we periodically collect open operations data, which are originating from uh, Prow, which is Kubernetes testing infrastructure, the heart of it, uh, Test Grid, which is the visualization platform for tests, for passing and failing tests, um, GitHub, and uh, Bugzilla, which is a bug and bug tracking system used in Red Hat, and different ops tools like this, and uh, make them available for analysis. We then collect some key performance indicator metrics coming from the CI CD data and display them, them on dashboards. Uh, we also build some ML services like the ones I talked about before and shared them um, as notebooks, scripts, um, tools, dashboards, and also the pipelines that make up these tools. And finally, we build all of these tools and services on an open, operations or an open community cloud um, called the Operate First Community Cloud, which provides ML tools required to build uh, these services like um, the underlying clusters, Jupyter Notebooks, Superset Dashboards, S3 storage system, uh, database engines, um, and we also make all the notebooks, templates, uh, pipelines available, and um, scripts open source. So, What's the Operate First Community Cloud? Uh, it's basically an initiative which is centered around open sourcing operations of software. Um, it provides us with a real production uh, community cloud, which can be used to um, operate software and applications openly. So thus, we are open sourcing the operations of data, uh, the SRE best practices, and generating tons of open source operation data, including logs, metrics, issues, uh, PRs, in the process of doing so. For a data scientist like me, uh, it also provides me with a real platform with instances of cloud services and applications that can support my data science work streams. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about the Operate First Community Cloud, um, you can find me after the talk at the Red Hat booth. I also gave a talk on this yesterday with Marcel Hild. You can definitely go back and check the recording. So um, apart from the data coming from the operations com um, op Operate First Community Cloud, another important source of open operations data which we are interested in is the data originating from the Kubernetes testing infrastructure um, which is Prow, Test Grid, uh, and all its associated logs and metric data. 
So um, when we talk about the operate first community cloud um, and it being useful for data scientists, um, this is what I'm referring to. So uh, the Open Data Hub project is uh, one of the projects that's being operated on the Operate First Community Cloud. So it's basically an open source project which consists of various data science tooling like um, Jupyter Hub, uh, um, Grafana, Spark, Apache Superset, Trino, Open Metadata, Pachyderm, uh, Airflow, Kubeflow pipelines, all of these different um, open source um, tools which can help with different parts of a machine of the machine learning workflow. Um, and also the other side of the uh, same thing uh, is the op open operations data that's being generated by operating the, um, op uh, the open data hub project. So, um, data like logs, metrics, uh, PRs, issues, all the SRE best practices, architectural decision records, uh, blueprints, um, all of that good information can be used for any sort of analysis. And it can also be used to enable any sort of AI tooling um, that we want to build on top of it. So here um, I'm going to now talk about uh, the tooling that we typically use for capturing uh, these metrics. So depending on your team or your open source community or project, there might be a metric solution that might be suitable for you. Um, there are also existing end-to-end -end solutions where you can just plug your GitHub uh, data in um, or repository in, and it's already generating some templated pre-defined uh, graphs and charts. Um, if you're looking at doing this or building this the open source way and putting these components together, uh, there might be different data sources that you want to look at, GitHub, GitLab, Garrett. Um, and there might be also different scraping mechanisms, GitHub API being, of course, the um, most, um, the thing that is underlying uh, beneath lo a lot of these high-level tools. Uh, there's Thought MI Scheduler, which we typically use. It's an open source project. Uh, there's the Chaos Augur project, which is, again, a large database of different um, GitHub repositories and its associated data. Um, and then you might want to look at different tooling for where you want to crunch that data. Uh, Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Hub is an environment that we typically use and store all of that data back into a SQL structure using Trino. Um, and then comes your dashboarding or your visualiz visualization solution. We use Apache Superset for it, but you might have different solutions uh, depending on your um, requirement. So uh, this is like a high level architecture diagram of the project. And this is the, uh, this is basically the flow that we follow to do all of this. So um, on the left, the yellow, that you see are all the all the data sources that we are looking at: test grid, GitHub, Prow, Bugzilla. Um, then comes um, in order to gain more insights into that data, you are programmatically collecting that data and creating Jupyter notebooks to crunch that data. Uh, then comes the metric processing part, where uh, here you're working with uh, folks in the community to actually understand what kinds of metrics are needed, uh, what you want to capture, what you want to um, gain from the large uh, sets of data that you have. And we are using uh, Jupyter Notebooks to do all of that. Um, and the main um, storage, uh, which is backing all of this, is uh, Ceph S3 storage, which lies underneath all of this. Um, and if you follow the downward arrow, um, here we are storing all of that data back in a SQL database engine and creating visualizations on Apache Superset. Um, but on the right uh, is the AI or the modeling part of it. Uh, some of that data is also fed back into developing some machine learning tools and services, um, which is then further deployed as an API endpoint or a service which can be integrated with a given tooling. Uh, so we use um, Selden model serving on top of Red Hat OpenShift to do this. And all of this, um, everything in the dotted line is automated using 
Kubeflow pipelines, which helps us uh, run recurring jobs and automate these bits. Uh, and again, we have some uh, reference architectures and blueprints on how that can be done. And all these tools are available as a part of the Open Data Hub operator, which is being deployed on the Operate First cloud. So let's look at uh, two examples of uh, machine learning models that we built to help with um, a, an, any open source project, for instance. So this service, the optimal stopping point prediction, um, is be, it's, it's focused on long running tests on a uh, given repository. Uh, so for instance, if, you are, uh, if you're a DevOps engineer or if you test your code often, you might be seeing that some tests just keep on running and um, it's taking way longer than expected to run and uh, after like a really, really long time, it fails. Some of that might be flaky, some of that might be uh, just due to some issues on the cluster or um, just, just something very random. Um, and there is actually a fair enough um, technique which you can use to uh, detect such long running tests and find an optimal stopping point beyond which uh, with a confidence score, um, this test is most likely to fail. Uh, so a model such as this can just help better allocate resources and um, save some time um, on a particular um, project. Um, the other pro project or the ML service, which um, I'm going to talk about, is the time to merge prediction model. Um, so the concept behind this is for every new PR that is opened on a Git repository, uh, this model is able to predict the time that it will take to merge this open PR, uh, and it adds a time estimate or a label on the PR, zero to three hours, three hours to six hours, six hours to one day, one day to one week, and so on and so forth. Really depends on the repository, the project, and what we, you're trying to get out of this label. And such a, such a model can also learn from the actual time that it took to merge and create that whole feedback loop into making this service better and more useful. So uh, a metric like this can help identify bottlenecks in the development process. So for example, having an estimate of how long it'll take for a PR to merge uh, can help the developers on the engineering managers better allocate resources to certain PRs or speed up the whole process. Uh, it can also give new contributors an estimate of when their issue or PR will be reacted upon or merged. Uh, and this can help encourage contribution to an open source community and especially from new contributors if you have sort of an estimate on this is going to be looked at but maybe one week down the road or at a, after a certain period of time. Um, so this is the current workflow that we follow to build such a service. Um, as you see on the top, uh, we collect the data, engineer certain features from it, uh, build a uh, a suitable model for this and create a service um, endpoint to it and finally integrate this as a bot into the pull request uh, repository itself. Um, so a little bit uh, more insight into each of these steps. So uh, for collecting the data itself, we started with um, some large repositories. We looked at the OpenShift origin uh, GitHub repository and we are using um, this PyPy package called SRC Ops Metrics to collect all the data. It actually has the GitHub API underneath. It's uh, adding some more um, entities um, and it processes the data a little bit and makes um, the raw data that you're collecting more suitable for analysis. Um, then comes the feature engineering bit. This is the, I think the most important part of this model because here we are actually looking at the uh, kind of data that you want to capture from a repo or a PR in order to give a label like this. So, so, so for this, we are not only looking at the PR itself, like when was it opened, uh, what's the size of the PR, what are the l l number of lines, what's the description, um, size of the description, title, uh, but also the code repository itself. So for example, who is the contributor? Uh, who, who is opening the PR? Who's the author? Are they a maintainer? 
um, have they contributed to a certain part of the repository um, and um, we look at all those features and rank their importances and look at the most important ones which can impact such a model um, and then we look at uh, certain classification models we also explore a regression technique which would give a timestamp uh, but we uh, finalized on a classification approach which will basically bucket the time uh, that will take to merge so we looked at some vanilla classifiers um, and finally we deploy the best performing model using um, the Selden um, operator on Red Hat OpenShift and we expose um, a route to it which can then be integrated onto a GitHub repository directly or you can access it from a Jupyter Notebook or from your terminal or wherever. So um, that's, that's about the approach. Um, I'm at 21 minutes, um, so as promised, uh, the next steps for this approach. Um, we, are on, we are currently um, working on integrating this model as a bot on GitHub PR, so you can directly install this as a GitHub action, or you can download the bot and set it up with your uh, repository. Um, we are also looking at ways to gain live feedback from uh, the repository with which it's merged, um, and also iterate on the models for better performance. Um, look at more advanced classifiers and um, neural net best based techniques and um, also uh, finally we are working on toolifying this whole approach uh, for a few of our machine learning models so that you can use it like an API um, and also tweak it uh, on the basis of the features that you want to uh, lay emphasis upon. So leaving you behind with uh, some resources uh, if you want to engage with this project. So there are a list of open data sources which we have linked and also uh, stored uh, with the repository. You can also uh, interact and leverage um, the different notebooks uh, for analysis. Um, and also look at the open dashboards that we have as a part of this project. Um, we also run um, these uh, models um, openly so you can actually send payloads to th these model endpoints and try them out for yourself. Uh, we run automated AIML workflows using Kubeflow pipelines. So we have those uh, pipeline configurations and also some guides on how to set this up for your own um, machine learning uh, workflow. And finally, if you want to learn more about the different analysis and notebooks and the more ML side of it, uh, which I didn't go into much detail, you can check out our YouTube video playlist. Um, and I think that's all I had for today. Um, thank you so much. And if you have any questions, um, you can let me know now. Let me try to pull a dashboard that we have, we had built for this project uh, called Thought. Uh, it's a Red Hat project for Python stack analysis, and they also have an associated community. So um, they wanted to look at some high-level metrics around um, issues and PRs. So this is just an example of the dashboard we were looking at. Uh, so there are some um, trend charts, if it loads up correctly, um, some contributor trend charts, some... Um, just numbers basically which um, they um, needed from us essentially um, but this is more just to show you how the UI looks like uh, for Apache Superset of course the same data can also be plugged into a different visualization platform but um, but yeah that's that's all I had um, are there any questions <laughs>